Nicole Cohn, Santa Rosa Press Democrat. LeBron, uh, in, in reference to this whole thing with Draymond Green, the, the Warriors players um, seem concerned or upset about the fact that you, they said, stepped over him, or the other word was straddled him. Why did you do that? Well, first of all, before we get started, I want to, um, my condolences goes out to all the lost ones and families um, in a tragic shooting in Orlando. Um, uh, I think it's uh, another, another hit for us as Americans and what, what we have to deal with. Um, in, in, our, in our world today, and, and, it, and it definitely puts things in perspective on basketball for myself is just a small matter of what what reality is really is. So um, my, my uh, prayers to all the lost ones and all the ones that's recovering from uh, this morning's tragedy in Orlando. Uh, to get to your question, I don't really have an answer to it. I don't, I don't I'm, I'm not quite sure what any of the Warriors guys said. Um, I'm not a disrespectful guy. I don't disrespect anybody. It's all in competition. So I don't really have an answer to your question. Well, let me follow up. Were you aware at the time that you stepped over him? Was it something you didn't know that you did or did you do it intentionally? Well, I was just trying to get back into the play. Um, I think what had happened was intentional. I know we got into a, um, into a grapple, you know, at the top of the key. But, you know, me just trying to get back into the play, that's all. That was my whole mindset. Uh, next question, second row. Gerard Grau Pere, Raku. LeBron, after four games, you are playing tomorrow uh, an elimination game. How hard is for you to be in this situation? Um, it's not hard. I mean, you go out, you give everything that you have to your team and to your teammates, and you live with the results. You know, um, I put a lot of hard work into, into my career and into this year, so, you know, I know what I'm capable of doing. I know what our team is capable of doing, but it's it's not hard. You just go out and do your job. Joe on the left. Joe Varden, Cleveland.com. LeBron, when you're playing Draymond or anybody that was in Draymond's situation, um, how aware of you, or how aware are you that he's one flagrant away from a suspension? And does that, I mean, does it affect how you go against, how you go into a matchup like that? Uh, I think something like that, you're very, uh, you're unaware. I, I didn't even know at that point in time. Um, what you are aware of what's going on in the game. You know if a guy has one foul, you know if a guy has two fouls, you know if a guy has one technical, you know if a guy uh, you know, is injured or whatever the case may be. Those things that's happening throughout the course of a game, you notice those things, but um, you, you're not, I don't, I've never been aware of, okay, if a guy has, if a guy gets one more flagrant or if a guy gets, uh, you know, I don't know, one more penalty point. I, I'm not quite sure of all that stuff. I, I'm not aware of that. Al in the second row. LeBron, Al Sarasovic, San Francisco Chronicle. Um, did, the other night you said you didn't expect the NBA to assess a flagrant. and I believe your answer was no, I don't expect them to do it. Um, were you surprised by today's decision to assess a flagrant, and do you think that resulting suspension is fair? Did you feel like it was a flagrant? Well, I think the league, uh, they handled it as they felt um, they wanted to handle it, and uh, that's their call. It's been their call all year, and uh, us as players, we got to play on no matter what happens. Um, you know, uh, you can't, you can have your either go with what the league says or you, or you don't, but at the end of the day, they make the final decisions. Uh, you were pretty upset, obviously, on the court at that moment. Did you feel like it was a, a flagrant foul? Um, I felt like it was, uh, you know, at that point in time, it was a little bit outside of basketball. Jason, second row. Ron, Jason Lloyd, Air Beacon Journal. You know the history. You know no team's ever come back from 3-1 in the finals. Does this give you guys a little bit of a lift or a little bit of a spark maybe that you needed? Um, at the end of the day, it doesn't. Um, for our team, uh, we know how dangerous they are no matter who's in the lineup. I mean, obviously, we saw what they was able to do without Steph for two weeks, you know, playing against Houston and playing against Portland. Those guys still complement each other, complement each other no matter who's out on the floor. So uh, we have to be obviously much better than we were in game four. And in order to try to get a win on a, on a building where they've been very successful. Over here on the right. LeBron Seb Costello with Triple M. Just to pick up on your uh, comments there at the end, obviously the first two finals went their way in Oracle. How do you nullify that away court issue? Well, uh, not many teams have been successful here. Uh, but at the end of the day, we just have to play better. 
think our first two games we had way too many turnovers, which resulted in those getting in those guys getting out on the break. And I think it was I think we averaged 18 turnovers for 25 points in game one and game two. Um, no matter how well you play, that's just not in, uh, good ingredients for for a victory on anyone's floor, um, especially not in the defending champions floor. Over on the left side. Bill, Bill Livingston, Plain Dealer. LeBron, when the Warriors were up here, there was some talk about what trash talk crosses the line and what doesn't. Clay Thompson said, I guess he just got his feelings hurt. You talked about being a prideful guy and that some comments during my made. Would you discuss that whole issue of what's fair and not fair on the court? What happened? What Clay said? Yeah, and what crosses the line? No, I'm not. What did you say Clay said? Clay said, I guess he just got his feelings hurt. <laughs> oh my goodness! Um, I believe the transcript will support that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm not going to comment on, on what Clay said because I know where it can go from this sit-in. Um, <laughs> it's so hard to take the high road. I've been doing it for 13 years. It's so hard to continue to do it, and I'm gonna do it again. Um, at the end of the day, we gotta go. Out, we gotta show up and, and play better tomorrow night. Um, and if we don't, then they're gonna they're gonna be back-to-back uh, -back champions, and um, you know, and that's it. But uh, I'm taking the high road again. Jermaine, back right. LeBron, um, Jermaine Franklin with TSN. Uh, LeBron. After last game, you said you were slightly perplexed about the lack of calls um, against your defenders when you're playing as aggressive as you are. Do you think that will change? Do you expect it to change as the series progresses? I can't. I mean, that's something you, for me, you can you control what you can control. And, and that's something that myself and our team can't control. Um, what we can't control is how aggressive we play on both ends of the floor. Uh, our coaching staff will prepare us the best way to go out and win game five, and it's up to us to go out and execute it.